Hello learners, let's understand the concept for public law. We will today start with the topic of nuisance. Now there are two kinds of nuisance, that is public and private. So let's understand about them one by one. First one is your public nuisance. Public nuisance is, is an offence which affects the public at large or some considerable portion of them. It depends on the number of houses and the concourse of people in the vicinity. And the annoyance or neglect must be of a real and substantial nature. Acts which seriously interfere with the health, safety, comfort or convenience of the public or which tend to degrade the public morals have always been considered public nuisance if it is shown that they render enjoyment of life and property. No prescriptive right can be acquired to maintain a public nuisance. What are the examples of it? The examples of it are pollution, drug activity, explosive storage and possession of dangerous animals. And this is exactly what a public nuisance is. Now let's understand that what is a private nuisance. Private nuisance is anything done to the annoyance or to hurt another or non-amounting to trespass. It's an act affecting some particular individual or individuals as distinguished from the public at large. And what are the examples of it? The examples of it are vibration, pollution of a stream or soil, smoke, foul odors, excessive light and loud noises. And this is what is a private nuisance. So public nuisance is an offence which affects the public at large, whereas private nuisance is an offence which affects a particular individual. Now, a person is guilty of nuisance when he or she does any act or is guilty of an illegal omission and such act or omission can be what? Must cause any common injury or danger or annoyance to the public or to the person in general who dwell or occupy property in the vicinity or must necessarily cause injury, obstruction, danger or annoyance to any person who had rights to use it. So, a person who is guilty of nuisance is when he or she comes under any category that is mentioned on your screen. Let's move on to another topic. So here comes estoppels. It's a legal doctrine recognized both at the common law and in equity in various forms. Now, it's meant to complement the requirement of considerations in your contract law. In general, it protects a party who would suffer detriment if the defendant has done or said something to induce an expectation. The plaintiff relied reasonably on the expected and would suffer detriment if those expectations were false. So let's move on to the next topic. Next comes volenti non fit injuria. Now, it's a Latin expression meaning to a willing person, injury is not done. It operates when the claimant either expressly or implicitly consents to the risk of loss or damage. Now, for this, the consent must be free, the consent may be expressed or implied, an act must be lawful. Let's understand this with the help of an example. If a regular spectator at a cricket match is injured when a batsman hits a six in the ordinarily course of play, and the ball comes out of field and hits him or her. This is a foreseeable event and regular spectators are amused to accept that risk of injury when buying a ticket. Now a slightly more limited defence may arise when the defendant has been given a warning whether expressly or the plain or clement or by a public notice, sign or otherwise that there is a danger of injury. The extent to which defendants can rely on notices to exclude or limit liability varies from country to country. This is an issue of policy as to whether the defendant should not only warn of a known danger but also take active steps to fence the site and take other reasonable precautions 
to prevent the known danger from B falling those foreseen to be at risk. Let's move on to the next topic. So the last topic of the day is Exterpi causa non auditor actio. It's a Latin expression meaning from a dishonorable cause an action does not arise. It's a legal doctrine which states that a plaintiff will be unable to pursue legal remedy if it arises in connection with his own legal act. If the claimant is involved in wrongdoing at the time the alleged negligence occurred, this may extinguish or reduce the defense liability. Let's understand with the help of an example. The example is if a burglar is verbally challenged by the property owner and sustains injury when jumping from a second story window to escape apprehension, there is no cause of action against the property owner even though that injury would not have been sustained but for the property owner's intervention. I hope you people have understood little bit about the public laws. You can go to EduRev and attend these tests to understand this chapter in depth. Also find more amazing content of other subjects. You can unlock all the locked videos, docs and tests of CLAD with EduRev Infinity Plan and ace your exams at less than 80 rupees per month. Thank you.